Welcome back, everybody. Today's video is going to be about one of my favorite heroes in the 7.35, and he's going to be played in a different role than he's been played traditionally, and not in the sense that a different position in the game, but the way he plays the game is entirely different. Different. In light of the new Crownfall update coming around the corner, I figure it's a good time to try something new in a pub and have a fun build for you guys to experiment with in the meantime that I've had a lot of success with. It's actually a build that was inspired by a pro player back at Dream League, and I hope to inspire you guys to try this build out and experiment a little bit. Let's go ahead and get started. So the hero that I've been alluding to this entire time is one of my absolute all-time favorites, and that is our boy, Slardar. Now, before we jump into the new build and the way to play him, let's ask ourselves what we think of Slardar. Well, like, what does this hero do? How do we build him? What kind of items does he buy? So traditionally, I'm thinking Slardar is a attack speed bash lord that stun locks you, gets like a moon shard eventually, and just kills you without you even being able to move. And it goes through BKB, because it's a bash. And that's also how he plays his lanes. Slardar's always traditionally countered heroes like Lifesteal, Jug, Spectre, these heroes without slows, without stuns, that can't really protect themselves, usually rely on some form of tank ability, like Dispersion or Magic Immunity, and he just bashes them to death. No matter how tanky they are, they will eventually die. So that's all fine and dandy. Slardar, I have an old guide on him. Love for you to check him out. It's in the description below. Uh, and that talks about this build. But what if it is a game that is incredibly difficult to right click? What if they have a Crystal Maiden 5 with attack speed slows and roots? What if they have a Techies that disarms you consistently? What if they have a Troll Warlord that makes you miss? What if they have a Broodmother that makes you miss? What if they have heroes like Timbersaw that if you try to stand your ground and right click them, they just kill you? Well, these are all the questions that this build answers. And what I love about this build is that you can still play Slardar the old way, but if you feel like the old way isn't really gonna be that great this game suddenly this build takes the cake and having a hero with multiple builds being able to play in pretty much any situation i think is what makes a hero conceptually broken and this new build i would argue is even more fun than the old one without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the player that inspired me to do this build so the player that inspired me to do this build is actually xss for extreme gaming who played against team spirit two-time ti winners uh, laning against Yatros Troll. Now, Troll is one of those annoying heroes for Slardar to play against and lane against because he has the melee mischance of Whirling Axes, 60%, pretty brutal. And he also has a ranged hero with a slow that makes it difficult to close the gap in the lane. So traditionally, the meta has evolved for Slardar to no longer go Mask of Madness or Midas as these attack speed items. He generally has been going some attack speed item that also gives him mana regen. The Mage Slayer patch, we saw him going that. Before that, we saw him going Echo Saber into Harpoon, but Echo Saber buildup kind of feels bad nowadays. And now the traditional item that people are going in good Slardar games is actually Orchid Malevolence. It's an attack speed item that gives him mana regen. And if he blinks on top of somebody after, you get the mana regen item, then you get the blink, then you kill them with the Orchid. Very brutal, right? But what we've been seeing across all of these items is that they are mana regen items. Like Slardar has stopped going, focusing on the attack speed aspect, but more so always goes for a mana regen item. He is going to rush a Yule Scepter. Now, in theory, this seems a bit weird, but Troll Warlord hates playing against Yule Scepter. Heroes like Puck, eventually you can get a Wind Waker and get out of their coil. You know, when you're dealing with heroes like Techies about to blast off onto you, you can just Yule's them midair. These are very reliable heroes to kind of like kite and use mana regen in order to farm in the early game. So what we're going to see with this skill build is no longer the traditional one point sprint, one point stun, and four points bash. We're going to actually see XXS go for max slithering crush. And that's gonna be his method of farming. So I've teleported us into the game about 10 minutes in, and this is the portion of the game where a lot of offland players tend to struggle with, do I be active? Do I farm? Slardar has always been a farm for the first 15 minutes kind of hero because he gets kited in fights, doesn't have a blink yet. If he goes blink, he lacks damage. So sitting in your area is generally what you're gonna wanna do. And so we're gonna see that he has the maxed out slithering crush right now. And we're gonna see that he goes back for maxed sprint like he leaves bash at one point until all of his other skills are maxed out and this is important to note because we're going to see some little efficiencies that xxs does in the early game where you can see like oh you know i'm clearing a wave pretty fast with my stun i just leave because the enemy carries here and we're going to go back and stack big camp and ancients with his ulti really nice hero for stacking camps actually because his ulti aggros and it's a pretty long range instant cast ability you walk up clear the wave Clear your own stack, not bad, right? Can farm stacks decently. Stacks the Ancients again, checks Rune, goes right back to top wave. What's so cool about this build is move speed, 
move speed, and mana regen. You get around the map very quickly. You can walk through the river. You stack camps. You rotate back to lane. These Remember, these are matchups where you're not particularly good against the carry. So you're not playing up in their face. You're not looking to like dive towers and pressure. You're looking to kind of just play for your own game. And he's consistently stacking the Ancients. Now, something to note is that he's going to have teammates that come help him take the Ancients. Slardar alone can't really take the Ancients unless he gets a shard. So if you're doing this in your pubs, which I highly recommend you do when you're rotating between lane and jungle just to stack this camp, if nobody on your team can't take it or nobody seems to be taking it at 15 minutes, queue up that shard. That's like a thousand gold from the stack anyways. So you'll get the shard right back. So your shard applies your ultimate on your stun and it applies the minus armor before the stun and your stun is physical. So suddenly your stun has an extra minus 10, minus 15 armor if you're level 12. And you can clear that ancient stack pretty quickly because these ancients only have magic resistance. They don't really have that much armor. So this can be a huge bolster to your farm and pubs where things are a bit less coordinated. You're not really stacking for your team as much because they might not use it. So something that's really important to note about this build that makes it incredibly successful is that you have somebody else on your team that's meant to do the damage. In my game later, you're going to see Templar Assassin. In this game, you're going to see Outworld Devourer. You got to kind of be imagining somebody else on your team who's outputting the damage because the little bit of limitation of this build is that with Shard and Blink, this ability actually does a lot of damage, but it's not enough to bring down like carries and stuff. So you need somebody who's going to bring down the carries because if it's not you with like Echo Saber, you know, and a bunch of right-click items, BKB, then uh, nobody's really going to do the job. I wanted to show you what he does in the 10 to 15 minute window when he has the Yule Scepter and no other items. He kind of just plays his territory, maxes out farm by getting stacks and going back for the wave, using his mobility to check for runes. And then Slardar becomes more of a traditional Slardar, but with the twist that when you blink stun, rather than killing somebody, you're more of a kite hero. So I've taken this build to a whole new level in terms of committing to the kite aspect. In XSS's game, he goes Yules, Blink, BKB, Ags, like very traditional items after the Yules for Slardar. But I wanna show you guys the fun I've been having and hopefully we can sell you on having it as well. So here we are in my game at 15 minutes. We're up by 4K, decent lead. And I've queued up a shard after I'm going for the phase jewel scepter. So notice the build. I went double bracer. XXS only went for one, but there's the casual sage's mask, wand, phase boots. Now that may be something you guys are looking at and going, why not treads? Well, this isn't really a right clicking build. It's a chasing kiting build. So phase boots synergize much better with it. The Yule scepter idea. So notice how his neutral item in his game was an arcane ring. Mine is a fairy's trinket. So pretty much any mana item you're going for, you're no longer going for like the right click items like pig pole or broom handle or the gloves that give you attack speed. You're going for more mana regen items like the honeycomb, this arcane ring, etc. What happens in this game is we're up by a decent amount and my TA gets gone on top in a standard pub fashion, dies, gets really upset and buys back. So this is a situation in the game where I kind of knew the game was devolving. And so my build, if I'm going to go for like blink dagger is all about enabling the team, right? That's what it's all about. And so I realized at this moment exactly that I needed to take this game in my own hands. And the way that I view carrying pubs in your own hands is to be able to be survivable and clear creep waves. And eventually you can buy items that kill people. So let's fast forward a bit into the game because I do go shard. And the reason I went shard is so that my stun one shots the broodmother spiders. Generally speaking, I wouldn't go for shard that early, but since it drastically changes a matchup, then uh, I like to go for the shard in this case. You're going to see that there's an ancient stack here and I have the shard and you're just going to see how fast I farm it. It's not bad at all, right? Takes three stuns and it's gone and you have plenty of mana regen to use it. So by no means is this like three stuns going to be all that costly, right? So TA's feeding again. Game's still decent. You saw there I one shot at the broodmother spiders and we're just going to play for our own farm and there's going to be some sick timings that come out for us. So let's fast forward a bit. We get our blink dagger. We can choose to play with our team or not. So notice how I usually blink stun and then I kite. And this is a big part of it, right? The whole idea of like, okay, maybe bash them once and then we're going to kite them. We're just going to kind of wait. We're going to fish. Then we're going to stun again. Then we're going to run away. Then we're going to bash. Then we're going to blink chase with a stun. And then we're going to die like an idiot. But the whole idea is that this hero is all about chasing. It's all about chasing. It's all about kiting. It's all about fucking with them a little bit. When you blink stun somebody and they get corrosive haste for five seconds, it's annoying. 
and it allows you in case they try to juke you through trees or something to ult them on the way out so anytime somebody's ulted by corrosive haze it's the same feeling as when they're tracked you can see them they feel like shit because you can see them and they have minus armor so that also feels like shit that they can die at like any moment so this whole idea of consistently applying corrosive haze and letting your team kind of do the job where you blink in stun run away and you may be saying bsj we're not sold this game looks like ass well I blame the TA, but you're going to see that this build is going to start coming into pe coming into play here as heroes like Timbersaw that are traditionally like scary to me are actually running away from me. You see that? See how much this guy's running away from me? Managing to catch for our team. Yule Scepter to buy ourselves some time. Bash. Ult. Allow for our team to kill the Timbersaw, right? Link stun. Kite around. And look how fast people die just with this amp damage on them. And the fact that this takes some time to cast and you have to turn and cast it is annoying sometimes. Like that blink stun on Ember is only possible because I have this shard and it allows my team to burst him in that short amount of time. And these long drawn out fights are exactly what Slardar now likes. In the past, Slardar was all about bursting somebody, blink stunning, bursting. But notice how it's just kite, mess with them a little bit. The tier two neutral item is always either mana regen or health regen. Like uh, XXS took the bullwhip. I took the dragon scale because I didn't get a bullwhip. But any item that gives regen is really the go-to because uh, you just want to stay on the map. You want to stay in these fights. You want these long drawn out fights. So any little uh, health or mana regen items are fantastic. And this shard clears creep waves pretty fast. Suddenly you one shot range creeps. Um, every melee creep only takes one attack. So I'm going to go for the full-on memes here, guys. I had Wind Waker initially queued up, but I'm not against Puck or anything, so it's not good yet. And I'm thinking, like, well, all I'm doing is Blink Stunning, running away, Blink Stunning, running away. Why not just do it on a lower cooldown with more mana regen? You know, if you're a BSJ Avid Watcher, you'd know my favorite item in the game is Octarine Core. Maybe Manta, you know, but Octarine Core, it's up there. I freaking love this item. Because what's more fun than having more spells to cast on a lower cooldown, right? So Slaughter is absolutely fantastic at taking Roche. That minus armor makes him plus anybody really take it, even though in this case we have a TA. It just makes it go even faster. So we're going to finish this Octarine core. And you're going to say, like, you know, BSJ, uh, how much impact can you really have on Slardar with these items, right? Well, that question is going to be answered because I made this entire video about this build, so hopefully you like the answer. So Slardar is now such an even better initiator for his team. As we're going to catch the Broodmother on the side here, notice we see the little arrow on the map, and the Yules can even be used to set up your own stun, like so. Allowing your team to catch up, miss the stun like a boss, and then he dies, right? So you're even better of an initiator on the map. Get these long drawn out fights. Your stun still applies ulti, even if they're BKB, because they're still hit by your stun. They're just not stunned. So keep in mind that you can actually just use it for damage against BKB targets. By amping them. Blink stun, run away. Just mess with them. Get that ulti off using the vision from the previous ulti. That's something I really liked doing. Because the stun shard only lasts for 5 seconds. While the regular one lasts for 18. So it's nice to use the extra one. Keep in mind one of the most common items against Slardar. At least at the highest bracket. Is Lotus Orb and Manta. So both of these items are really annoying to ult them. Because they're either multiple units. Or Lotus Orb reflects your ulti. But because his shard makes his stun an ult that is not single targeted, reflectable, hits an AoE, it's actually really good against all of these items. So I think Slardar's not only solving his issues of being able to right click, but he's also good against all these items that are previously good against him. People generally build to kite Slardar because he burst you. But why not just build to kite them back? Fight fire with fire, my friends. So just sit behind your damage dealer, ready to help him out. Blink stun. Burst the guy that's went on him. You know, we talked about this TA. Maybe we're no, we're a little salty about this TA throughout the entire course of this game, but it is what it is. So one thing about this build is that you actually farm really fast and you don't mind showing on the map because of this whole like Yule Scepter, the sprint being permanently up. If you needed BKB, like you look at their lineup and you think I need a BKB, but I'm so mobile, right? I have sprint constantly, so I'm hasted. I have blink, Yules. So I'm very mobile on the map. I farm really fast because I just have the mana regen to spam stun. Look at creep waves, right? Stun, hit, hit all once. They die, right? Take a little skirmish. Back off. Go clear the opposite side of the map because you can get there so fast. Stun a creep wave, it dies. It's always one hit for each creep. Or two stuns, as you're going to see here. And the enemy was smoked. They're looking for us. And I'm just being super annoying on the map. Look how, like, evasive I am. 
like we see them show in the top lane they were looking for us my team's actually smoked and instead of being in the smoke i'm the guy like clearing creep waves so the reason i say this is because how often have you guys played kill heroes that don't really clear waves you're looking for your teammates to do something feels like you can't get them rallied around you and you kind of are stuck doing the split pushing job yourself this is a fantastic hybrid build of if your teammates are doing that great meaning like if they let you go around killing people fantastic if they're not you can farm you can clear creep waves it's not that bad at all setting up kills for your team because you're the one clearing all the dangerous farm on the map and we're gonna see again just like how potent this blink stun is for the burst so this Ember is amped, and he's just going to die full to zero. Pango is also all physical damage with his spells, so nice synergy with Slardar. And this is when the hero gets real. And if you haven't been sold, it's the level 20 talent Slithering Crush. Looking at the talents, we always take the right ones. Permanent Guardian Sprint, Health, because you're not really looking to bash people, and Slithering Crush. Now, the reason why this is so amazing is not only is your crush going to do more damage to heroes, but it now one-shots Creep Waves, people. It one-shots Creep Waves. So this is the part that we're going to dream about as an offlaner that doesn't traditionally farm, right? And catch people on the map. And then we do this. Oh, that feels so fucking good, man. Oh my God. It feels so fucking good to do that. Oh, one more time. Oh, my oh, best feeling in the world. So we've got the Wind Waker now, right? We're absolutely unfucking killable. Why? Because unless they buy Nullifier, which is just not a good item in this meta right now, how do they ever kill you as a hero that blinks, stuns, and then Yule Scepter's away, right? They just can't. Like, look at, they're trying to find me. They can't. Blink, stun, creep waves. You only show for like one second, and then you're gone. So there's never really the information advantage for the opponent. And I actually want to show you how applicable this is in the highest tier of professional dota so as we flash back to the extreme versus team spirit game you're going to see that xxs has hit level 20 right and he's going to go clear this creep wave team spirit's going to run at him see how yatoro immediately tps they're going to try to gank him because they saw him show on a creep wave they're going to try to kill him on this next creep wave guys watch oh it's dead and they're going to chase buddy slardar he's really fast run and he blinks away and in this case, he, his BKB is on cooldown, so he might as well not have a BKB in the sense of the example. So I'm showing you guys just how pro players are like, oh, they're showing on a creep wave. Go kill them. That's an important time to get a kill. But this fact that this hero that is all about vision, all about jumping you, all about bursting you in the past is now okay to show on creep waves, kills them instantly, and is really elusive and hard to gank. So last but not least, in my game, you saw that I queued up a Lotus Orb. So I was all about like, oh, okay, utility. Not only am I going to be able to be staying alive, but I'm also going to keep my teammates alive because in that game, they had a Bloodthorn. So let's talk about what your roles become in teamfights, right? You're a bit of utility, vision, save now, right? I even said like, I have a Lotus Orb in my game. Wind Waker's a save item too because it can be used on teammates. What is his role in fights? His role is, Slaughter's a huge threat. Let's remember this. Minus 20 armor, BKB piercing disable, stuns for days, Let's just remember this. This hero is a huge threat if left alone. So his job with this build is to just throw himself in. Seems simple enough, right? So he just runs in, gets Yules by an opponent, actually separates Yatoro from his team because Yatoro is behind them here. And they're going to take him down, right? They're going to set up for his team. And then he's going to run away from Yatoro looking for reinforcements. Notice how in the past, Slardar would be a part of the gang hitting and killing the guy. But Slaughter is going to be chasing for more, right? He's going to be looking for more enemies, scouting out areas, clearing creeps with one hit. So Slaughter just becomes much more of a brute tank, run at you, deal with me, or get dealt with kind of hero, right? And you're also going to see the opponent go on his carry, and he's going to save him with Wind Waker. So... Slardar suddenly becomes a killing machine that is unkillable and saves his teammates. What? Conceptually, what else do you need in the game? BKB piercing disables. They can't TP away from you. It's actually insane when you look at this like hero's late game uh, potential. And the Ag Scepter to boot is 40% status resistance, 30 HP regen, and 15 armor inside of your stun puddle. So just bear in mind that all of these things add up. He helps you take Roche. He takes Tormentors really fast for his team. The Tormentor reflects less damage because it has minus armor. 
That's how the Tormentor works. Like, it reflects the amount of damage you do starting with your hero before reduction. So if you reduce its armor, it does less damage back. So suddenly these, like, late-game Tormentors don't really kill your team and they just die, right? The Tormentor does. At the end of the day, my new favorite build, pioneered by XSS, but taken to a whole nother level by me, is the the Blink Wind Waker Shard Octarine Core. And you might need BKB, you might get Ags, but you can go other save utility items like Sheep, Lotus Orb, anything that plays long fights and enables basically, or I'd say disables the opponent's ability to burst you and then also save your teammates in the long run. And the only stipulation about this is it's not a great slaughter game because they have ways of preventing you from right-clicking and you have one guy on your team that's meant to do damage eventually, like OD or TA or just some carry like PA. You know, it can be almost almost any lineup in the game has at least one damage dealer, but be worried you're not slaughter off lane with like Spectre carry and, you know, like a puck mid. Uh, heroes that traditionally don't do all that much damage. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Really spam slaughter with this build. I think it's super fun. You'll. I hope you guys like it too. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time.